webinar, Three Ways to Get the Most from Fiserv Premier. My name is Greg Richards, Director of Marketing for EnableSoft and a speaker for today's event. Just a few housekeeping points before we begin. All attendees are in listen-only mode, but if you do have any questions, you can type them into the chat box that's on your screen. We'll do our best to answer as many of these as we can at the end of the event, but any unanswered questions will be addressed within 24 hours of the webinar's close. And now, without any further delay, let's introduce today's topic, Three Ways to Get the Most from Fiserv Premier. You're going to hear from three speakers today, Stacey Kimston from Standard Bank, she'll be talking a bit later, myself, Greg Richards from EnableSoft, and Kyle Seitz, Head of Support, also with EnableSoft, will be joining us later on in the webinar. We're going to do our best to have you out of here in 30 minutes today, but first a quick agenda. We'll tell you who we are at EnableSoft and about our product, Foxtrot, and we'll introduce you to digital employees that is Foxtrot One. Stacy Kimston will talk to you a bit about her use of Foxtrot at Standard Banks, and then we'll wrap up and we'll have you out of here. So first, just a little bit about us at EnableSoft. Who are we? Well, EnableSoft is really all about what's possible today. We're an innovator in productivity and innovation solutions and efficiency solutions for over 18 years. We're a partner to nearly 500 banks and credit unions. Of that, we call one-third the top 1,000 banks and one-half of the top 100 performers customers. So that's EnableSoft, but what about our product, Foxtrot? We'll be talking a lot about it today. Foxtrot is software, true enough, but it's software that works like a digital employee. When we say that, we mean that this digital employee intelligently performs unstructured manual processes across all cores and card systems, including Fiserv Premier. More importantly, though, Foxtrot and these digital employees are the software and the solution that will allow you to automate many of Fiserv Premier's most important capabilities. And we're going to go into three ways in which we can do that here in these following slides. So when we talk about getting the most out of Fiserv Premier with digital employees, we're talking about several things, the first of which is name and address merges. So let's talk about that now. For Premier customers who've recently moved away from or been moved away from the portfolio model that was introduced a little more than two years ago, you've probably been left with multiple records for each of your many, many customers. Uh, to better understand the total relationship among and between the multiple accounts of each customer, and create what we here call a customer-centric view, we need to be able to merge these multiple accounts under one name and one address. And that's exactly what digital employees and power banks and credit unions to do for themselves. For those of you watching and listening who have maybe multiple records for multiple customers, either, either as a result of that, portfolio, uh, that move away from that portfolio model, or by double data entry by some of your tellers, or for any other reason, our digital employee software can replace the manual efforts by going into Premier, seeking out duplicates, and merging or eliminating some of those records. Is there some human effort required beyond simply instructing the software what to do? Of course there is, sure. Uh, for every instance where multiple records and accounts exist for a single customer, your representatives will need to identify the surviving record, or what we call the surviving record. Identifying things like social security number and addresses that will match and then executing the process. But rather than having a staff member physically copy and paste the data into accounts, they can build value elsewhere by serving customers or coming up with that next great idea while the technology handles this for them. So let's talk about application two, where uh, digital employees help you get the most from Fiserv Premier, and that's user-defined data fields or flex fields. One advantage to using digital employees here is that instead of real ones, is that we can create and populate flex fields in all accounts or even a subset of accounts automatically while we're performing other tasks, right? So we can use digital employees to create and populate fields based on account relationship, for example, or some other unique identifier like how the account was opened. So Stacy, when she comes on a little bit later, is going to share an example of the former. But in the case of, a, of the latter, we can instruct our digital employees to search for all accounts that were, say, uh, opened online or opened in a branch, create that flex field, and then insert that value. Or we can identify customers by state, for example, and then create a flex field to be populated with a particular tax rate or some other code that's unique to us. So here digital employees are helping you to maximize the capabilities of flex fields and do it automatically. 
And then the third application, that third way to get the most from Fiserv Premier is by automating mass data changes. So mass data changes until now had to be made in sort of an all or nothing way. Today with digital employees, though, we can make specific changes to segments of our database automatically. And I'll illustrate this by telling you we, have, we do have a customer based in Illinois who's using this technology to automatically move certain segments of their database, of their customer base, excuse me, to new DDA products automatically. Their marketing department assessed the spending and saving habits of customers and created new products with varying interest rates, perks, rules, et cetera, that fit those lifestyles. They then segmented those customers by product and put their digital employee to work changing each individual customer to one of the new products they've created. The software references each customer by name or social, references the new product, and changes that product type automatically. So again, here we're maximizing our ability to make discrete changes on a mass scale while eliminating manual work. This is much more than simply a mass data maintenance tool. Kyle is going to show you a little bit more about how this is done later on. So let's talk about how you're doing it now. In all likelihood, uh, you're doing this through manual unstructured processes, custom programming or outsourcing. Uh, all three work in their own unique way, but they've got sort of varying levels of effectiveness and efficiency. With manual unstructured processes, of course, you're risking error anytime you have a human being manually entering data. Uh, you're wasting time and you're missing opportunities. These employees uh, are entering and changing data by hand rather than out on the floor serving customers or again coming up with that next great idea. Custom programming is, is effective if you've got the, the technical expertise in-house, but it can be time consuming and at the end of it you're left with essentially a custom program that performs one task versus say employing a digital employee who can do many, many things with much less effort. Or of course you can outsource uh, to a, a third party. Again, we're looking at sort of a single use application. Uh, you've lost control because you're now passing that task on to someone outside of your organization. And in many cases it can be quite costly. Or you can get Foxtrot. Foxtrot's 100% accurate every time, unlike manual data entry. There is no manual data entry with Foxtrot or programming. Automates functionality like we've just seen in Fiserv Premier and even integrates your core with disparate applications. So if your core and LOS are not integrated or your core and card issuance platform are not integrated, Foxtrot can uh, make that a possibility today. Quickly, this is Foxtrot. We'll see it more in depth in just a few minutes. But again, Foxtrot is, is a software that moves data within the core and between your core and disparate platforms or even between disparate platforms themselves. Enters and changes data just like you would but much, much faster. And its smart scripting technology ensures fast, accurate scripting and fast execution every single time. So now I'm going to introduce and bring on Stacy Kimston with Standard Bank. Stacy's been an assistant vice president with Standard Bank, and she's been with the company for over seven years. And she is a key Foxtrot user at Standard Bank, and she's going to share her story uh, and illustrate her story with all of you. Take it away, Stacy. Thank you, Greg. A little bit about Standard Bank. We were established in 1947. We are currently a Fiserv Premier Bank. We are processed by Brookfield, Fiserv Brookfield, since 2006. And we are based in Chicago, Illinois, with 40 branches in the Illinois and Indiana area. We are about approximately $2.2 in assets. And since my career here at the bank, at the end of 2006, uh, we have been using Foxtrot One. It, they were just changing over from Foxtrot LE to Foxtrot One, and that's where we are today. I use Foxtrot at least once a week for many different reasons, but some of the reoccurring projects we do with Foxtrot are the ones listed here on this screen. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these here on the next slide. Our Householding Flex Field process is something that we currently do at the beginning of each month, but initially this was a very huge undertaking. We currently keep our business and personal accounts that belong to the same individual or family in separate portfolios. We also have customers that may own different businesses, and those are also stored in different portfolios. And because of that, it was very hard to truly view the total relationship of an entity. And a little bit of background on how Foxtrot did help and continues to help us with this is that in 2008, the bank purchased a third-party profitability application. And that focused us 
or that forced us to come up with a way to link those accounts in order to best analyze our relationships across different ports. Our MCIF was, and it currently is used to generate a household number, and that links accounts across different portfolios. We decided to use Foxtrot to add that number as a flex field to every account in the core across all applications. When the project was started, we had a total of 118,000 changes that need to be made. So we decided to purchase additional licenses of Foxtrot. So we had eight licenses total. And we were able to complete all of those changes in just a few weeks. At the time, we had considered contacting Fiserv and having them do a mass maintenance for us or doing some custom programming. But after evaluating everything, we wanted to get it done as soon as possible. And with the testing time Fiserv would have needed, along with getting on their books, not to mention the cost that could have been involved, we just decided to purchase the extra licenses of Foxtrot and were able to get it done fairly quickly. Today we run a business analytics report after month end to determine what new accounts were opened so that household number can be assigned to the new account. We run those accounts through our NCIF to determine if the account belongs in an existing household or if it's a brand new household that needs to be generated. But regardless of that, the flex fields for those accounts are then updated on the core using Foxtrot. The second thing on the list is our responsibility code maintenance. This is something that we try to keep on, up on very uh, diligently. At account opening, an employee opening the most oftentimes be assigned as the responsibility code on an account. We rely on that responsibility code very, very often as we use that person as follow-up for the customer if we need to get a hold of them for any reason. And if that in employee or individual leaves the bank or is moved to a different branch and location, we try to change that responsibility code as soon as possible. This can be done on any given day. We can't determine when the changes need to be made. <clears throat> so Foxtrot is, is, has been very helpful for us to be able to get those changes done really quickly. As all of you know, being Premier clients, this is also a drop-down field. And with the number of values that are in that drop-down field, Foxtrot is able to quickly and easily find and select a new value within the drop-down versus having someone to manually have to scroll up and down in that list to choose a new responsibility code. And after I'm done speaking, Kyle is going to do a quick demo to show you how easy and how quick that process works. Our branch profitability analysis, in December of each year, we put all of our accounts through an analysis to determine which branch the customer used to make most of their deposits over the course of the year. When an account is opened, its accounting branch is assigned based on the branch that the customer came into to open their account. But over time, that customer may start using a different branch to make most of their deposits. And if that's the case, we will change the accounting branch on the account at year end so that for ultimately when we go through our year end reporting, we accurately can see the profitability of each account. The time frame between the results of the analysis, which will be anywhere the, couple, or the second couple weeks of December and year end is short. And we just don't have the people, the manpower to make these changes and we need to get it done by year end. This is a field that's just like the responsibility code, so using Foxtrot makes everything much easier than doing any of these changes manually. And the last process that we use this for on our list here is our dormant debit card maintenance. When Fiserv goes through their annual purge, they need debit cards to be in a closed status in order to automatically do those purges. So prior to that purge date, we go through and check to see which debit cards have a hot card status and have not been changed in at least nine months. If this, this is the case, then we create a list based on that and use Foxtrot to change the card status to closed. And then when Pfizer runs their purge, those accounts are automatically deleted. 
we have on average about 10,000 cards per year that are purged. So, and with Foxtrot, I have been able to get this process done very quickly. I have it down to where I can change statuses on a debit card for about in about two seconds per account. So, you know, we're getting a lot of cards done in a very quickly in a very quick amount of time. In addition to that, for debit cards, we also assess a fee if a customer comes in and has lost their debit card and, and is requesting a new one, or if they request a PIN mailer. When our bookkeeping area receives that request, they send the customer the information, but then go out onto the customer's account and add a flex field to say that we need to assess a fee. We charge them a $5 fee for that request. And at the end of the month, I will run a report to see which customers have that flex field. I use Foxtrot to build a block to charge all these accounts the $5 fee. And then I go back out onto the account and I delete the flex field so that that may be added for the next month. And those are just a few examples of the way that we use that here at the bank or use Foxtrot here at the bank. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand it on over to Kyle, who's going to do a quick demo. Thank you, Stacy. I'm going to go ahead and flip the presentation over to you. Okay, so this is Foxtrot, and looks like she's already got Foxtrot open with Navigator. Mm -hmm. Stacey, would you mind just passing over a mouse and keyboard control? I don't think I have that quite yet. Alright, so I'm going to give a brief introduction of Foxtrot. First, I'm going to open up the, the script that uh, Stacey talked about, about changing those responsibility codes. So essentially, there's a couple different pieces here. You have your main toolbar upstairs here, which will be for doing stuff like if you want to move actions around or maybe edit or cut, copy, paste actions. Below the toolbar is your scripting center. Um, all the way to the left of your scripting center are your uh, your action lists or your instructions on what you're going to tell Foxtrot what to do to perform some process. Um, there's two different types of actions. We have interactive actions, which will do things outside of Foxtrot, like maybe clicking a button, sending a piece of information, or copying a piece of information. Uh, that's all done with the crosshairs up here. And then anything else that is more or less internal to Foxtrot, you will use uh, the action list uh, directly below. So maybe stuff like looping actions or making a decision based on some criteria, um, performing a calculation. I mean, you can see we got quite a bit of stuff that we can do. As we create actions, they'll be visible in our, our main scripting center. So you can see we got a handful of actions already written out here. And you can organize your actions within tasks. Uh, down below we have our view center. This is where you'll be able to view any data you have loaded in or any uh, maybe lists or special variables that you create that helps Foxtrot perform that process. And then directly below that is just our run center in which you can specify how you want to run Foxtrot and more or less click play and set the speed that you want the script to run at. So before we go ahead and hit play on this, I'm going to just bring in the data set that we have off of her desktop. So this is where I'm just telling Foxtrot to use some Excel spreadsheet that we already have created in order to perform this process for us. And Stace, can I have you log in for us? Okay. 
Thank you. Um, so we have most of the script written already. I'm just going to recreate these first couple of actions here just to show you how easy it is to actually script out a process. Uh, so if we're doing this manually, the first thing we'd probably want to do is send this account number into the account number field. So in order to interact with that field, I'm just going to drag and drop my crosshairs over that particular target and choose the action I want to do, which will be send a piece of data. And I'll go pick up that data field from that data set that we brought in. And then next thing we'll do is we'll just click Submit to bring us to that next page. And notice as I'm doing this, I'm not using any code. I'm just simply dragging and dropping um, the same way as you would maybe teach a new employee how to perform some process. There's no code involved. From here, we can just maybe hit play on a couple of records. at about 25% speed. And you can see not only were we able to successfully change the responsibility code, but Anytime we see any of these little warning errors that pop up every now and then, we're able to handle those as well. So at this point, I'm going to throw this on a little bit of a quicker speed, and I'll put these two side by side so we can actually see what's going on here. You'll notice if the wrong responsibility code gets selected incorrectly, Foxtrot's able to pick itself back up and properly select that, that code. And as Foxtrot is running through its data set, it knows to, to stop itself after it's processed the, the final record. We'll move through those records so that we don't process the same record twice. And once it's all done, it'll tell me that we finished the process and you can go on and go about your day and do some other stuff. So from here, I'll turn it back over to Greg. Okay, well done, Stacy and Kyle. Thank you very much for your help today. 
Well, unfortunately, we're kind of getting down to the deadline, so we don't have much time for questions, but we do have time for a couple of questions. So this is your opportunity. If you've got any questions about Foxtrot or about what you've seen here today, go ahead and enter them into your question field or your chat box on your screen. We've already received a couple. This was probably best directed to Kyle, and that is, can we have or can we script Foxtrot to launch itself? And the answer would be yes. So you can actually have Foxtrot launch itself off of Windows Task Scheduler. So if there's a process that needs to be done every week, every month, every morning, uh, you can set that up in your task scheduler to have Foxtrot launch itself and you never really have to worry about it again. Okay. Next question, what if the resolution of the window size is different? And then in parentheses, it has a different machine. It's actually a good question. You can uh, write a script on one machine and hand it off to another user and have no problem playing that script on a different machine. If the window size or the um, resolution on your screen changes, uh, no problem there either. Foxtrot's going to be able to find that target no matter how big or how small it is um, the second time or the third time around. So we don't, uh, it's not uh, positional or anything like that. Perfect. Okay, well, sorry for the, the brief question period here again. For those of you that have questions pending, we will do our best to answer those within 24 hours of the event. We'll give you an email address later on where you can send us some additional questions after the webinar. Well, let's go ahead and quickly wrap up here with some next steps. What are we going to do or what we recommend you do today or as soon as possible? And the first thing is contact EnableSoft for a proof of concept. Now, the POC or proof of concept is where we demonstrate Foxtrot in your environment. We'll actually install it for you locally and solve a real problem that you have with Foxtrot and prove it before you buy it. Step two is to download this presentation. We're going to send it to everybody that's in attendance today via email. And step three is that we ask you to share that information, share that presentation uh, among your coworkers who couldn't make it today, operations, IT, lending, everybody that couldn't be here today uh, should probably see that presentation. You can contact EnableSoft at the 800 number you see here. You can send us an email, of course, for any inquiries. If you have any questions about Foxtrot or what you've seen here today, or to schedule a demo, call us at 800-215-9397, email us at sales at enablesoft.com, or simply visit our website. And then before we leave today, first of all, we want to thank everybody for attending. Obviously, we really appreciate it. We know your time is valuable, and we are grateful that you've chosen to spend some of it with us. Uh, but before we leave, we want to share a quote from Henry Ford, who is not a banker, but knew something about efficiency nonetheless. And Henry Ford said famously, if you need a solution and don't buy it, then ultimately you'll find that you have paid for it and don't own it. And certainly that's uh, true with many things, including Foxtrot, and we ask you to keep that in mind and contact us at your convenience. So thanks very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.